This UCSD TV program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest programs. Now yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine, but you do have to be doing that same movement. Here we go. Seven, eight, and swing. In the fall of 2007, San Diego City Schools Visual and Performing Arts, or VAPA department, partnered with the University of California at Irvine Center for Learning in the Arts, Sciences, and Sustainability. For many years, California public school districts have eagerly looked for strategies to improve test scores. Six, seven, mow the lawn, go one. The more our leaders, our educational leaders, tried to improve test scores, they found that time was of the essence. And so they started eliminating parts of the program. And we all know what happened to that. In many of our school districts, the arts took a dive real fast. Time and tempo. Tempo tells us how fast something moves. And it does say right next to it, it says fast and slow. So we're gonna be talking about fast and slow tempo and how we can move our bodies really, really fast and really slow. Together, the organizations applied for and received a grant from the Department of Education to create special performing arts lessons connecting dance and drama to other content areas for students kindergarten through second grade. To this song, it's going to go fast and slow, and then in a little bit, I'll let you dance to it. Nice, Gabriel. Good arms, Kai. This development and dissemination education grant also examined how to help English language learners struggling to master English language acquisition. Good, Aiden. Good for you. No running, Ulysses. Brain research shows that the brain is just very malleable at that time. It's just very, there's just a real high level of readiness for children to acquire not just language, but any number of, uh, of skills. So introducing children to a language other than their home language in, in that age span is just, um, the conditions are most favorable. The life one day. How, how can you save my life one day? I am a big lion. Do we do hard body or soft body? San Diego City Schools VAPA department created and implemented the Arts Integration Teaching Artist Project, kindergarten through second grade, model development and dissemination grant curriculum. Dr. Brulette from UC Irvine led a team of evaluators who assessed student improvement. The VAPA department hired professional dance and drama teaching artists to mentor classroom teachers over a three-year period as they developed a new set of strategies using dance and drama to teach language arts. In 2013, with the rollout of the Common Core Standards, San Diego City Schools stands on the forefront to implement teacher training that uses both the arts and regular classroom content to teach students who have a variety of learning modalities. With these new skills, teachers can create lessons that challenge students to use creativity, critical thinking, and problem solving. This is a good thing to do alphabet-wise, if this is something you want to prepare for your solo week next week, too. Okay. You can have the Common Core Standards are the national standards that have been adopted by 46 states. And so the 46 states, um, the governors came together and said, teachers are working hard, but we don't seem to be hitting a target that helps all kids be prepared for college and career. They are English language arts and math standards. They're much more focused on 
analysis, critical thinking, problem solving, 21st century skills, skills you need for the world. As children, we all learned through listening first, speaking second, reading and writing next. And, and our English language learners need that speaking and listening. And the arts give them a way to express themselves, to use academic language. Being able to speak that uh, language wow, is, is makes all the difference in the world. All right, I think that you two girls are at the mall and you saw some boys. <laughs> no? I guess. Okay, I guess that, I, these are great expressions. I guess that you two ladies are at the movie theater and it's a scary moment and you're screaming and hugging each other for comfort. Is that right? Great, good. We started looking at how we were gonna do this, but we didn't have the funding, we didn't have the teachers. And then we met Dr. Leanne Brulette from UC Irvine and she contacted me and said, gosh, let's write a grant. <laughs> First, we wanted it, uh, the lessons to be teacher-friendly. The impetus behind this grant was to help kids learn English faster. Um, and I had become convinced that oral language th was the way to do this. Denise Lynn and Karen Childress Evans, who was the director of the Visual and Performing Arts, when I discussed it with them, they became really enthusiastic about the idea. What we were doing is setting up a curriculum based in drama and dance that allowed the children to learn what the state standards said they should learn, but to do it actively. Well, so often in the classroom, we really rely on visual and auditory modalities. I mean, that's, those are the main ones. The kinesthetic is the one that always gets left behind. So having dance integrated, freeing the students, inviting them, telling them they need to stand up, they need to move. Usually we're saying sit down, be still. So this idea of inviting them to experience things in their bodies is incredibly eye-opening. People hadn't really heard of this particular approach to helping ELLs. They weren't sure, some people, that drama and dance could actually help children learn English. So, Ms. Perez, I just worked to, to keep the instructions simple and loose. It's not, it's not complicated. I'm really just looking for my actors to convey character and emotion using body, face, and voice. And that, that's what I'm looking to achieve, right? How do we build teachers' capacity? Provide first teachers with those experiences where they, um, as I did, experience for myself. Repeat after me. I'll say it and you say it. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed. The big picture for this grant, the D&D grant, is to arm the teacher ultimately with some strategies using theater and dance so that they can implement that into their curriculum. And by bringing in a specialist, it takes a sense of pressure off the teacher, realizing that that's not something that they may not feel comfortable with theater or dance, maybe it's a subject matter uh, area that they're not particularly well versed in, but by bringing in an expert or a teaching artist and modeling the lessons for them would better prepare them so that when they have to take on the work themselves, they, can, they have something to, to uh, gauge how the lesson should look like or how to get the students in, involved with the lessons. It was the letter V, but you know what? I, I see why you would think a Y too, <laughs> so I see both. Let's think of another one, okay? And do you notice how we stay connected? We stay connected because we're partners, so we've oh, got to have one body that we're sharing oh, together. And then I take that on, you know, with my students, and then together we just engage in those experiences, and, um, and then I as a professional then use that also, or access those experiences to really enhance language and literacy and artistic ability. In that residency, although the teaching artist is teaching the students, the true student is the teacher. Any story that has three or four characters, as the teacher you go, well, how am I gonna inc include the whole class? This is one format. You could do all of your papa bears there, all of your mama bears, all of your baby bears. It's a question of what's manageable for you. How, how can I do it with the least amount of chaos and still incorporate everyone? You ready? The black cat yawns and opens her jaws. Yeah. Hey. 
Um, stretches her legs and shows her claws. The artist-teacher relationship really is, is critical for teachers to develop a positive attitude towards the arts that they are going to be responsible for teaching in the future. One of the things that we find with classroom teachers is reluctance at the beginning. Um, most of them, and one of them just told me this yesterday, I have never had a dance class in my life. I've never had a theater class in my life. All that training I went through as, a, as an elementary teacher did not involve those types of skills. So we're in there trying to pull them out of their comfort zone and show them that children can really learn and be engaged by doing this kind of work. Go get a lot more. A lot, lot more. All right, so get some more. In our teaching artist model, the first thing that we do is we start with the classroom teacher and the artist coming into the classroom and leading the classroom teacher through the lessons. The first hunter says, Oi, we're gonna catch a big lion. And his friend says, oh, yep, 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 we're gonna catch a big lion. <laughs> and his friend says, now, we've gotta set a trap. And he says, yep, 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 we're gonna set a trap. <laughs> The artist assumes most of the responsibility for delivering the arts material. The teacher we invite in to help manage discipline and to be a participant. Many of our teachers decide they'd like to take, take notes and they'd like to take a back seat. This is an activity called What Are You Doing? Down there on the warm-up section, um, they're, quiet please, they're asking us to warm up our voices. The bulk of the lesson is vocal warm-up. I, I look at the lesson, I say, does this accomplish what I want? And because we're going to be combining body and voice, I, as the director, say I'm going to add in a physical warm-up before we get to the voice. So it's very different because of the integration piece, and that is the focus of this curriculum and, and the placement at these schools. Um, in the past, dance is the focus. Uh, the schools or the, or the classrooms are seeking dance education, and we're really um, focused on, on the dance standards and um, not so much the integration piece. Uh, but this is definitely really making sure that we are covering both English language art standards and the dance standards and giving equal weight to both and um, working to, to develop both those skills. The difference between teaching a dance lesson and, and teaching an integration lesson, um, dance is, is a dance lesson would be focused on dance. That's the objective to come in there and teach solely the dance um, standards. Yeah, what's Last one, letter Z. You know, there are definitely opportunities that connect to other contents on a regular basis. Um, and myself as a teacher, and I think many teachers will take that opportunity to make those connections because the students will learn more um, in doing so. But in an integration lesson, you really write that into the lesson. You really have both a set of dance standards or theater objectives for your lesson, and you also have a set of um, English language arts, if that is the other content target, objectives. These are the, this is what, these are the standards I'm teaching, and, and this is what I want the students to get out of the lesson. And you do both, and you teach to both, and you assess for both. How am I going to arrange my class so that everybody in the room has a part? Rather than trying to, um, to divide the parts up, I'm going to work in groups of four, and each of the group will do everything. So in each group, I've got three billy goats and a troll, right? So everybody will get to do something through the whole course of the story, right? So that's how I'm going to manage my class. Right off the bat, trying to, to uh, get them comfortable with the material, very simple, very specific. I was always looking. Uh, with each lesson, what are, what are two things that when I leave today, you could turn around and do? We choose an icon, and then we decide as a group. I ask them, is it loud or quiet? And they tell me. And then I say, are we hard or are we soft with our bodies? And then they tell me, right? And we just, just look briefly at what we're going to do. We don't really practice it too much. And then we come back to our audience. Come face our audience. Step forward. OK, stop right there. Stop right there. OK. Bend your knees, and I'll guide them a little bit, right? Um, put your hand out, hold your rope. Can you gallop? And what do we say? Yeah! Can you gallop in a circle? We're going to be using posture and gesture. We're going to be using body, face, and voice. 
we're going to be using pantomime and tableau, right, to put this together. So what I'm going to do, Ms. Bloodgrave, for the, at the, for the last part of our class is that I'm going to read the story, and I'm going to show you a simple way to stage it, and then your job will be to rehearse it with them over the week. We'll take a look at it next week. I'll give you some pointers. And then at our last class, we're going to invite uh, another class to come and watch us. OK, let's sit in audience formation. So I need everyone to sit so you're ready to watch the group. When my kids could act out the beginning, the middle, and the end of a story, and it made sense visually through pantomime, and then we added words, and it helped them academically, and it was fun, that's when I totally bought in. And they can still do it. And they, can't, they can do it not just in the story we worked in, which happened to be the three little pigs, but second grade does comparative fairy tales. And so when they're acting out the big parts, they can do a comparison. So that was huge for kids who are seven years old. In the second year, the classroom teacher is released into teaching the lessons on their own with artist support. And so we're gonna take those body parts, the axial stationary movement, and we're going to make a path with our initials. For the second year, it's more about um, the teacher really taking ownership of it. So if they haven't taken ownership of it, I'm there to really just try to support them, bring that out of them so that they're ready to be more independent. We'll start with the hand. And we're gonna do a count of eight. Right? Yes. So we'll go one, two, three, four, four five, five, six, seven, seven eight. Yeah. I have a little more freedom to improvise uh, a lesson. Like if I feel like when we're doing a read aloud, there's a section that we could possibly act out a little bit, I feel like that is part of the whole VAPA experience. So we're just gonna do a curvy line first, right? Mm -hmm. We're just gonna follow curve. So we're gonna do the same count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. eight. Okay. It's curvy line. Nice and curvy. <laughs> They're applauding for you. Yay! <laughs> Everybody has a different learning style, so it gives those people with different learning styles their uh, chance to shine and, and to try out their, their own ways of doing things. I would say we're in the middle now because this is the end of our second year. I don't hear I can'ts anymore. I just hear I can's now. They have definitely been replaced with it. Um, I have teachers supporting other teachers. They found who's stronger in dance, who's stronger in, you know, theater, and they go seek out that support even though, um, and the artists too, but when the artists aren't here as much. So those have really gone away. And in the third year, the teachers are asked to teach the very uh, basic elements of dance theater. And uh, then they're asked to take those other concepts and integrate it into their curriculum where they see it fits. And our support in that role is to give them places where we think it would fit. So it's a gradual release of responsibility over three years. This year at the beginning, the teachers again were a little more hesitant because they didn't have the artist right by their side. But with the supports of the artist and the supports of their colleagues at quickly went away. So I am guessing that at the end of our year three, that confidence level will be soaring through the roof and the independence level will be soaring through the roof. Are you thinking? Okay, let's read more. Pop, pop, hippity pop. They bounce against the shaker top. From the beginning, I was just following Sonia. And I would try to copy what she had for that lesson because I knew I wasn't going to have time to go back to it and reproduce it at a later date. But I knew just general terms like uh, um, locomotor in general. 
at the end. That was the big thing. And we use that a lot in my classroom just when we're in transition because the kids respond to that immediately. When we're transitioning from um, doing math on the floor to doing math at their seat, I had them do locomotor movement and I had them do like a mouse crawl back to their seats. And first of all, they're quiet and they know it's locomotor. And then when we get there, we do a little bit of stretching. So then we're doing exhale movements and then they sit down. You have a beautiful opportunity to show the kids that are apprehensive also, or nervous, or unsure and uncomfortable, what it looks like to engage with something that y you haven't mastered already. You guys are not going to say, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. We have seen great things with the Model D&D &D with our English learners. I want you two to give me a little demonstration. You two are gonna be Jack and Jill at the bottom of the hill down here, okay? There's going to be the bucket of water is way up here, okay? It allows them more time to practice their English in a very fun setting. It has seemed to increase their vocabulary and their fluency. It also allows them a different avenue to show us what they know um, and to learn. Let's talk about what it means. What is Humpty Dumpty? What is he? He's an egg, right? Where was he sitting? Very often when I have been in professional development programs before, the teachers are dutiful, they carry it out, but they don't necessarily see the, the difference themselves. You know, you only see it in the test scores. But in this project, from the beginning, in the K2 project, the teachers got it. I think the teachers res responded in the beginning very positively because we had these teaching artists and we were entertained and awed by their expertise. Lock the bedroom door! Lock the bedroom. Hide in the covers! Hide in the covers! Shh, 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 quiet, quiet. Bring your covers down. I mean, not that we were sitting back and watching them, but we were taking it all in and participating. And then the second year, the second implement year of implementation, when we had to do it on our own, it was, you know, it was kind of like the brakes were put on a little bit because we were not experts. When we did take it on, it was really great. Like I got to do a lot of my lessons a little bit towards the end of the year more. You know, I was already done with other things that I had to do so that I could put more time into it and I really enjoyed it. All right, and you guys can help me say it, all right? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. We looked at the standardized test scores because we wanted to compare the progress of the children that were in the schools participating in the grants with children of similar background in other schools. So we've depended upon the California English Language Development Test as our primary tool to compare learning in the 15 schools, the 15 original schools, and the general ELL population, English language learner population. In the original grant, which included theater, dance, and visual art, we found that over two years, children who stayed in the program for two years were significantly more advanced in speaking and, li and listening skills. When we took this to our Board of Education and we presented our studies and these lessons and people spoke about the transformation of not only the classroom but the student learning, what, yeah, it was a shock. It was a huge surprise and it was wonderful. Our Board of Education directed me as the Director of Visual and Performing Arts to come together with people and create a district-wide VAPA Arts Integration Plan, K-12, and that was thrilling. 
all five of our board members are passionately supportive of the arts and they've kept us alive when it was easier for them to maybe cut us back, uh, reduce us, eliminate us. It was much easier for them to do that because we, everybody needed the money. But they have kept us alive because they knew the power of arts for a student achievement. <laughs> My mirror's moving at the same time? At the same time. <laughs>